Hi there! So, in the last episode, we looked at how this weird action platformer, shooter, Greek mythological thing called Kid Icarus came into existence. Now, upon its release in December 1986, the game received generally positive reviews and moderately high sales too. Nothing mind-blowing, but enough to secure a sequel for the Game Boy five years later. But after that, the series went pretty much silent, with no word of a third entry. Until 20 years later, that is, when Nintendo released Kid Icarus Uprising, an on-rails shooter for the 3DS created by none other than Super Smash Bros creator Masahiro Sakurai. But how did this game come about? Well, let us find out as we journey through Kid Icarus Uprising's development history. It was early 2008, and director Masahiro Sakurai had just finished work on Super Smash Bros. Brawl. Now, Nintendo president Satoru Iwata thought that starting work on the next entry in the series right away wouldn't be ideal, so he suggested, let's do something a little different. Now, at the time, work was just beginning on Nintendo's new handheld console, the 3DS, so Iwata requested that Sakurai develop a game to be released alongside this new system. And so, Sakurai began brainstorming some possible ideas. He figured that Iwata would want something a little different, the type of game Nintendo's in-house developers were unlikely to come up with. Plus, he wanted to challenge himself. But what kind of game would be an interesting challenge for him? Well, one genre that was almost non-existent in Japan was the shooter. Sure, there were a few titles here and there, but Sakurai thought that the large majority of good shooters came from overseas instead. Plus, a shooter would emphasise the planned stereoscopic 3D feature of the 3DS, which was to be the console's main selling point. Eventually, he settled on the basic premise of a game that switched between air and land battles. You would fly into enemy territory in the air, then fight battles on the ground. And so, with this idea in hand, Sakurai met with Nintendo to present his proposal. And in October of 2008, his project was approved by the company. Around this time, he met with Iwata again. During this meeting, Sakurai asked Iwata, should I stick with the Nintendo franchise for this project? Iwata responded, if you think your project would be a good fit for one franchise or another, let's think about it then. Hmm, was there a franchise that would fit with his air and land battles concept? Suddenly, he was struck with an idea. It was late 1986. The year had been packed with all sorts of influential grand adventures. The Legend of Zelda, Dragon Quest, Metroid… But one game was not like the others. Kid Icarus. Rather than pursuing a serious, adventurous tone, the game tackled Greek mythology with an upbeat and often comedic tone. Although it was set in 500 BC or so, the characters had credit cards. Plus, your character could be turned into an aubergine. <laughs> Now, the main character from this game, an angel called Pit who couldn't fly, particularly caught Sakurai's attention. What if he gave the character a limited amount of time in the air? This way, the game could seamlessly switch between air and land battles. When he suggested reviving the Kid Icarus series to Nintendo, they were fully on board. Once he got this go-ahead, Sakurai found an office space to rent out and established a company to develop the game, Project Sora. Now, this office certainly left a little to be desired. According to Sakurai, the window glass was razor thin and wind drafts leaked through them. Nevertheless, he started recruiting members to his new company, and development of this 3DS Kid Icarus shooter began in earnest. The first thing Sakurai began working on was finalising the project plans and designs. He looked at the genre of shooters and started taking away all the unnecessary elements, until he found what he described as the fun core, the part of the game that made it enjoyable. After this, he began putting together an outline of the game's story. Yes, this early on. You see, in his experience, stories in games often tended to be kind of irksome. In his words, for example, games that take forever to get through the intro and won't let you start playing, or games that go through the trouble of being fully voiced and wind up having their tempo all messed up as a result. I just want to enjoy the game. Sakurai knew that the story in this new Kid Icarus game would have to be very finely tuned. It had to tie in with the gameplay, so that what was happening plot-wise matched up with what the player was doing, and it mustn't ruin the game's pacing. But at the same time, if it was too stripped back, then it would be kind of pointless. 
To get this difficult balance right, Sakurai made the decision to write the entire game's script himself. That way, he wouldn't have to keep explaining things to a writer. Plus, he could play to the game's strengths and dance around its weaknesses. In other words, he would be in complete control. As he put it, with a game like Kid Icarus, which features air battles where the gameplay, dialogue and music needed to fully mesh with each other, it was vital that the story and game were one and the same, and could easily be fine-tuned. After this, he and the team actually began putting together some gameplay. He knew that the game would require the camera and the player to be moved separately. But how could they go about doing this? The 3DS, lest we forget, had only a single control pad, and controlling the camera with the D-pad would be far from ideal. Then Sakurai struck upon an idea. What if they used the touchscreen as a sort of controller? However, Sakurai thought back to some DS games he had played, where the touchscreen was used to control the character. He described playing these games as trying to steer with oars. It was decided instead that the touchscreen would be used to accurately aim. It would be just as accurate as a mouse, if not more so. Oh, I should mention, the team were constructing all of this gameplay under far from ideal conditions. Preparations for Nintendo's 3DS system were still very early on, so Project Sora had no development kits or anything like that, and knew very little about the 3DS besides the basic hardware layout and, obviously, the 3D ability. They had to develop the game using Nintendo Wiis and PCs. Not exactly ideal. Now, another important aspect was the music. Although it would have been easy to simply score the game with a mix of energetic, upbeat ditties, it was important to Sakurai that the music did more than just serve as a constant backdrop to the gameplay. In the game's initial plans, it was clearly written that, to match the whirlwind of changing events in the air battles, the music will need to match every development. And so, Sakurai decided to bring on his first composer to the team, Takahiro Nishi. Now, it was clear pretty quickly that Sakurai had some high expectations for the soundtrack, so he and Nishi worked together to assemble an army of composers. Namely, Motoi Sakuraba, who composed the game's main theme, Yuzo Koshiro, Masafumi Takada, Noriyuki Iwadare, Yasunori Mitsuda, and Natsumi Kamioka. Wow, that is a lot of musicians. Now, this motley crew employed a mixture of both synthesised instruments and real orchestral ones, too. They had to constantly keep in mind the idea of the music matching the gameplay, which led to a set of tracks which were constantly changing as they went on. This presented a bit of a challenge for Natsumi Kamioka, who was in charge of recording the tracks with the live orchestra. The music was constantly speeding up and slowing down, and often had incredibly specific tempos, like 120.00096 BPM. And the percussion was used so much that the mallets broke in half. According to Kamioka, these orchestral recording sessions were an incredible undertaking. However, they proved to be worth it in the end, with the soundtrack receiving a lot of praise from all around. Now, one completely new element to the game this time around was the Fiend's Cauldron, a way of allowing the player to perfectly customise the difficulty to their own ability level. Before pressing play, the player could choose the difficulty on a slider, which would decide how difficult the enemies would be to defeat, how strong their attacks would be, and so on. If the player chose a higher difficulty, they would be rewarded with a greater chance of receiving strong weapons or extra life hearts. This risk and reward system allowed players to play at a level that suited them, without upsetting the balance of the game too drastically. Now, as the game began nearing completion, the team worked extra hard to ensure it looked as good as it possibly could on the 3DS. It became clear that in order to get the game out in a finished, polished state, the release date would have to be delayed by a year. And so, over this last year, the team meticulously went through the game, carefully pushing the 3DS to its graphical limits, and fixing bugs, too. And so, on the 22nd of March 2012, Kid Icarus Uprising was released unto the world. Critical reviews of the game were extremely positive, with it even receiving a perfect 40 out of 40 from coveted Japanese games magazine Famitsu. Sales too were high, with the game even helping to boost the sales of the 3DS itself. And so, it was proven that everything Sakurai touches becomes a runaway success. <laughs> no, but I do think that Sakurai is an incredible game designer, and is sort of underrated in comparison to, for example, Miyamoto.
Now, I think the Smash games are great, really. I mean, I'm pretty terrible at fighting games in general, but of course I can recognise how brilliantly put together the Smash games are. However, if what many people predict turns out to be true, that Smash Ultimate will be Sakurai's last Smash game, then I'm really excited to see what other weird little projects Sakurai gets his hands on in the future. But not after he's taken a long, long holiday first. I think he needs one more than any other person. Hi there! Thanks for watching to the end! So, if you didn't see it, last week's episode was about how the precursor to this game, Kid Icarus for the NES, was released. Click here to check it out. And if you enjoyed this, maybe you'll enjoy some of my other episodes too. I hope so. Okay, until next week, see ya! Sorry about my croaky voice, I just drank a mug of coffee.